Uh, before I, I get into this, I want to give you a little bit of a, a heads up as to sort of uh, who we are. Some of you may recognize the name Integra Gold. Uh, that was our first project uh, that this team uh, ran from 2012 to 2017, culminating in the sale of uh, just under $600 million to El Dorado in 17. So when we were looking for our next project, uh, one of the things we wanted to make sure was that we had the same sort of pillars that set us up for success uh, with our first project with Integra Gold. So when we found the Delamar project that I'm going to talk to you about today, um, that had a lot of those pillars being things like, you know, safe jurisdiction, proof of production from a major uh, on the property, great infrastructure, good grade, and things like that. So as we go through, hopefully you'll see some of those things. Um, obviously, management's one of the kind of key things that you want to be looking for as well. Just the green button here. Just the big one, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know that this is a fairly risky way to invest capital. Uh, management team, instead of reading you the bios, I'm going to talk about who we are in a couple slides, so I'll touch on that a little bit more. Uh, suffice to say that it's a very successful team. Uh, board of Directors, David Aram, co-founder of Sandstorm, Anna Ladd Kruger, she was CFO at Trevally. Uh, Randall Oliphant, former CEO of Barrick, and then Timo Juristo has senior experience with both uh, Gold Corp and Placer Dome. So who we are. So when you look at this chart here, it kind of outlines what we were able to do with our last company, uh, Integra Gold. It was a Valdor-based project. We took that ultimately from a $20 million market cap up to a sale of just under $600 million in about a five-year period. And we were also able to drill over 300,000 meters and also raised well over $150 million. Uh, I think one of the key things to highlight here is that most of that heavy lifting was done during the worst bear market on record for the Golds. Uh, so with this team, you get a team that's proven that they can deliver as far as raising capital, aggressively advancing their projects, and also uh, aggressively marketing their projects, no matter what the market environment is like. And actually, recently, we we're pretty proud to see that uh, El Dorado, who we sold our project to, poured their first bar of gold on our old project just this past month. So it's exciting news as well. Uh, as far as the share structure goes, we have 77 million shares issued and outstanding. Um, we have no warrant overhang on the stock. As you can see, there's only 1.7 million broker warrants. Uh, we wanted to make sure we kept a fairly tight uh, share structure here. We have uh, 14 million remaining in the, in the till, which gets us through to the end of the year with the work program that you're going to see. Uh, and when you look at some of our shareholders, market cap's about 65 million right now. We've been able to hold in quite well over the last uh, uh, year and a half since we've had this project now. Uh, so management has 12 percent. We've put in well over two million dollars of our own capital into this project. Uh, it's a very uh, widely held institutional story as you can see there with about 60 percent of that. Uh, we like to think we've got a really good list of shareholders uh, anywhere from you know Ross Beattie, Pierre Lassonde as well as uh, groups that you see there, JP Morgan, Extract Capital, um, Hadron Arbim, Mason Hill, uh, groups that are, are fairly well known to be investing in the space. Interesting part about this story is that uh, there's two very distinct and different periods of production. The most recent was 77 to 98 when there was an open pit operation. Uh, it ran up until 1998 and the only reason it shut down was due to low gold prices when it went sub $300. So Ken Ross uh, put it on care and maintenance and ultimately started environmental reclamation before the next bull market kind of kicked in. Um, and that's how we were able to step into this with a three and a half million ounce inferred resource right out of the gate. Uh, so we were able to make this an advanced project pretty much upon acquisition. Uh, you look back at the late 1800s to early 1900s and that's the other part of the story and that's where there were families that were underground mining with fairly primitive mining methods. Uh, and they were mining some extremely high grade gold and silver both at Delamar and Florida Mountain and War Eagle as well in this district. They were averaging 30 gram per ton gold and using a 15 gram per ton cutoff. So uh, as, as you well know, it's hard to find that sort of thing these days. As far as jurisdiction goes, the Fraser Institute ranks uh, Idaho as being the fourth best place in the U.S. to be developing, exploring or mining. Uh, so we're happy to be there. The gentleman in the background of that picture is uh, Butch Otter. He's the former um, governor of Idaho. I did some marketing with him and some other companies from Idaho. Uh, he's done New York Investor Days with us. He's done uh, Toronto Days. He's very open to mining. His successor, Brad Little in the front, is his protege. And as you can see from the text there, they are working on making things even better. So we're very happy with the jurisdiction that we're currently operating in. Our resource, we've broken down into two different categories. One represents a heap leach cutoff, which is the top category there, at the 0.3 cutoff, which gives us the three and a half million ounces of gold equivalent in the inferred category. 
and that averages out at about 0.71 gram per ton. Uh, as you'll see when we go forward here, uh, a lot of the uh, drill results that we had are two to three times that so far with the extension drilling and some of the confirmation drilling that we've had. Uh, if you want to move it up to more of a milling cutoff, then that's the next category at the bottom, the 0.75 gram cutoff that drops us just a little bit below two million ounces, so still a good size resource uh, at a grade of about 1.3 grams per tonne. One of the things that we have in the pipeline coming up in short order as far as catalyst goes is a resource update based off of the 20,000 meters plus of drilling we did last year. Uh, so that's coming up in between a month and two months from now where we expect to see with the success we're having at Sullivan Gulch uh, both an increase in size as well as converting a lot of that uh, inferred into the indicated category. Uh, we also started our metallurgical testing uh, in the fall last year and we should start getting results from that in the coming months as well coming out. You can see at the mill they had great recoveries there and they did do a little bit of heap leach testing with the two inch crush. They were getting some uh, good, good strong recoveries and of course that's getting close to 30 years ago now so we're updating that with modern technology and those results will be made available uh, going forward too. So Sullivan Gulch, when you look at that resource, the three and a half million ounces, it's broken down into sort of two areas. Delamar, there's 2.6 million of those ounces, which is what we're looking at there uh, in that region. And then Florida Mountain, which is about five miles away, the other 870,000 ounces reside. Um, as you can see from these holes here, we are, we're able to hit holes anywhere from 90 to you know, 200 plus meters uh, of grade again, that's you know, two to three times that average resource grade of the heap leach cutoff. So we're really happy with that. Uh, you can see down in the bottom left there, there's a bit of a red bracket. So we've now got a strike length of 400 meters outside of the resource boundary. Um, and we've been able to extend that. So that's where we're going to expect to see a nice, uh, a nice bump on that resource update coming up fairly soon. Uh, that's just a side view of that 2.6 million ounces over at Delamar. And then that's that last hole that we hit, which was a significant step out for us where we stepped out almost 300 meters. So right now we're just kind of backfilling uh, in between so that we can include all of that into the uh, resource update that's coming out shortly. Florida Mountain again, five miles away. It was more of a satellite deposit. When you talk about infrastructure here, uh, the only thing we're missing at Delamar is the mill. That's the only thing of value usually when you uh, shut down a mine. Otherwise, we have the uh, power grids there, water treatment facility, all the buildings and offices that they used to have there as well. So this acted largely as a sort of satellite deposit for feed for that mill until they shut down in 98. So we've only done a small portion of drilling there at Florida Mountain. We plan to do about 6,000 of the 20,000 meters we did last year, but we were having such good success at Sullivan Gulch that we just kind of continued along there and only ended up with 2,900 meters of drilling. As you can see, we kind of hit some good numbers there, what we expected, which was you know, long intercepts of, of low grade and then some high grade pockets as well. It basically tells us we need to get back and do a, a proper drill program there, which will start up in the spring. Uh, so the plan for this year, 20,000 meters of drilling, it'll probably be a little bit more than that. Uh, resource update coming up in short order here within the next month or two. Uh, we'll start to see some de-risking here with our metallurgical uh, results coming out. And then that culminates in our first economic study that's due in September of this year. Uh, so with this story, it's pretty unique in that as a shareholder, and I always try to look at different mining deals from a shareholder investor perspective, you're getting exposure to a company that's de-risking in, in short order, the low grade side of the story. It's very difficult to go out and find a company that's advanced stage or development stage with a resource of our size in a good jurisdiction. But at the same time, you're also getting exposure to high grade, uh, potential high grade discoveries as we've basically tripled our land package. Um, and there's a whole host of high-grade targets that we'll also be going after as we move forward into this year. Uh, last thing I'll leave you with is the value proposition. Uh, if you're looking at market cap in terms of U.S. dollars, uh, right now around 45 million and enterprise value per total resource ounce in the ground. Based on the heap leach cutoff, the 0.3, we're being valued at about $8 uh, an ounce in the ground. And if you look at the companies that we have listed there, those are our peers, which would either be advanced stage companies um, or development stage companies. So again, on the low grade front, we are moving into the development phase this year. Uh, and we're also still searching for uh, high grade discoveries at the same time. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.